the welcome to the lecture 13 of the learning about learning lecture series. Uh, we are into um, uh, studying different aspects of uh, reinforcement learning. Uh, specifically, we are uh, into understanding the scheduling of the reinforcement or the outcomes uh, in response to the expression of the um, stimulus induced response by the animals. There um, we said there are two uh, major classes of presentation of this uh, um, outcomes of the reinforcements. One of them we said is a contiguous presentation or continuous reinforcement scheduling versus um, the second one being the partial reinforcement scheduling. Why would you, uh, so apart from the fact that um, Skinner ran out of the food pellets and then he is trying to be uh, say conserving the food, uh, why would you even uh, get into the notion of partial, partial reinforcement? It turns out um, when you, when we look into the behavior of um, this reinforcement learning, uh, we started out by saying that um, you have a stimulus, we call it as S and you want the animal to actually develop a response. In order to develop that, what you are doing is that um, you are uh, reinforcing that response by presenting a favorable outcome for that animal, a likable out outcome for that animal. When you repeatedly keep doing this, all right, the notion is eventually when you just present the stimuli, the animal should be able to get this response. But what we would like to ask is how good is this retention? How good is the retention of the stimulus eliciting a response? Remember this is equivalent to we talking about a CS paired with a US acquiring an ability to elicit a response all by itself when presented later, right or this all goes in time, right. So this we know is pretty robust, you can go ahead and keep testing it, right. You can keep on testing it. It's You can test it after very many number of times, it is pretty robust. Of course, um, if you test it very, uh, very many times such that there is no US being presented, um, I mean the test does not involve a presentation of the US, right and we know that extinction kicks in. Same thing here, when you have the stimulus response outcome and then when you are testing the ro uh, robustness of the stimulus eliciting a response you are not necessarily presenting any outcome, okay. Of course, you can do that, but you can decouple that. So, when you do not present it and then train these animals, right, you say that we have decoupled the response to the outcome. This is an important um, phenomenon uh, for the animal to capture because we said the school of learning in the living beings exist so that they can modify their behavior to suitably respond to the stimuli, right. If no longer you are coupling the response to the outcome, indirectly you are saying the stimulus is no longer good predictor of an outcome. So, you should be able to modify your response, there is no point keep on responding to a stimuli. How well do they do it? It turns out if you do it in a, if you train them in the stimulus response outcome, unlike the CSUS association, the answer is little bit, a uh, bit more complex. In the CSUS association, it is very simple. You keep on doing that, you will cause, it is robust, but it, you will cause an extinction. You can modify it. Here, whether you will cause an extinction, whether the animal will extinguish the stimulus response depends on how you actually train them. What do I mean by that? 
Remember towards the end of the last lecture we were talking about scheduling the responses right. It turns out if you were to schedule such that the stimulus response outcome is acquired through contiguous manner right which is your reinforcement is uh, continuous, continuous reinforcement. that is to say every single response of the animal is rewarded is reinforced. Now you decouple them the extinction is pretty quick neat and clean. In fact that is a problem the whole um, paraphernalia of the stimulant response outcome be, uh, um, study that you are doing is with the motivation that we would be able to develop some habits, so develop some responses, we can bias these responses by presenting this reinforcement such that in future I can have this response for this um, stimuli without having to worry about this reinforcement that is the motive right and if that motive is completely gone here because I cannot keep on giving this uh, reinforcement all the time at some point I need to get rid of this such that you are having a stable behavior and it turns out that is not the case at all when you are doing continuous reinforcement. They will extinguish pretty quickly however when you do partial reinforcement ok does not matter which of the scheduling you are using but if you are using a partial reinforcement that is good enough and the extinction in the partial reinforcement is extremely hard to come by. It is not that you cannot but it is just hard and clearly that is one of the reasons why you really would like to study the way of press how the way of presentation it is called scheduling affects the strength of the stimulus response relationships. Now what we are going to do is that we are going to take a little bit more detailed look at uh, how these responses develop in the various different uh, the four different uh, scheduling paradigms that we talked about. Number one uh, being the fixed ratio right. So, what we are going to do is that we are going to plot the responses of these animals as a function of the uh, as a function of time or as a function of presentations you can think of right. So, um, in a contiguous uh, presentation you would expect at the uh, earlier part of the learning we are not talking about the saturation where we have reached the V max and stuff at the earlier part of the learning you would expect the responses here. So, this axis and uh, trials or um, time in this axis. So, you would expect for the contiguous um, presentation it should be a very simple straight line and every instance for every response you are actually uh, reinforcing that. So, I am not uh, plotting that out. but you will see a pretty simple straight line right that is contiguous continuous uh, reinforcement. However, when you are doing uh, this on a fixed ratio all right what is going to happen is that the animal is going to understand that uh, for until unless it is actually uh, reaching a particular response number right you are actually looking at uh, this is a cumulative response here that is when you are um, cumulative 
wait you just found um, so unless until you reach that fixed number you are not going to get the um, food so what it is going to do is that it is going to um, keep pressing it keep pressing or keep pressing the lever or keep responding just like the contiguous thing no, no doubt about it right after it gets the reinforcement it understands for some some time or some process it is not going to get the food at all. So, you will see a little pass here it is it's, it's, um, it's not necessarily going to get um, uh, have any responses there, but then it soon quickly understands ok I am not going to get the food unless I keep pressing it. So, it keeps doing this these are straight line straight lines with small passes here. So, that is what you would get for a fixed ratio as against a fixed interval in time ok. So, these are straight lines flat um, parallel lines to the x axis and what you see here is that um, they wait a there is a little bit of lag then pick it up little bit of a lag pick it up little bit of a lag pick it up. However, when you do this fixed interval and let us uh, mark it through green dark green what you see is that the animal clearly understands until a certain time is elapsed um, there is no point I am going to get the response. So, they alter the rate at which they are doing this liver process according to that. So, you uh, here you can see the rate of uh, liver process are same right that is why the slope is same the slope represents the rate and that is why you have straight lines in bits and pieces. In here that is not going to be a straight line, but in fact it is going to be a curve that is doing that. So, what is happening here? The rate at which they are doing the liver press is, is slow uh, lower and then it quickly picks up because they know as the time for the next response comes in I mean next reinforcement comes in they know that they are going to get reinforced. So, they quickly pick up and they get the reinforcement right here all right and then again a lull period fix it up right here and so on and so forth. So, clearly if you look at the way that the response their behavior is changing with respect to the, the scheduling you can see there is a wide difference between the uh, fixed ratio and fixed interval learning as against the continuous reinforcement too. So, the green here would be um, fixed interval. So, now what is happening here? Oh, we need to talk about uh, two, one more thing to number 2 is I mean two other things um, fixed interval all right. So, we talked about the fixed ratio fixed interval right two more things which are variable ratio and variable interval. Let us quickly take a look at that is going to look and then let us discuss what is happening here ok. In this case I will go back to the blue where I am going to say it is going to be a variable ratio variable um, interval. So, now what do we expect here? In a variable ratio in this scenario since um, the responses are um, distributed about a mean um, ratio mean number of responses uh, elapsed responses before it can be reinforced the animal has no way of actually estimating that right. They can estimate roughly that there is going to be a reward, but uh, they do not know when they they really cannot predict when the reward is going to come. So, what they do is that they start to respond continuously at a constant rate. So, what we see is 
if you time or the trials again the same axis here and then the cumulative responses we are plotting out here just like the last graph you would see them learn pretty much like a continuous thing if I did not tell you whether it is a variable ratio or a continuous refer um, thing just by looking at the cumulative responses you will not tell them they are both different. However, the slope the rate um, at which they are uh, the line is going up could be different all right. But the interesting point uh, being that they are traveling in a straight line without any breaks right these are the places where you are actually having a the rewards or the reinforcement. How about the variable interval? The variable interval again is very non predictable right you uh, the, an, uh, the animal understands that the reinforcement will be ready for them to take at a given int, uh, interval of time, but they do not know when that interval is going to be and they also know that if they do not respond they are not going to get the food. So, they constantly keep responding though the rate at which they will be responding will be much 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 lower because it is the interval and not the number of responses they do understand that. So, what you will see is that a curve that sometimes parallel or that is still a straight line, but with a lesser slope indicating that they are responding lesser ok and this is these are the places where you are probably giving the reinforcements. Now, let us put these two things together the two graphs together and let us look at what what exactly is happening. So, now clearly you are developing some kind of an expectation it is not the expectation that in the sense of uh, what we talked about in um, earlier, but some kind of an expectation you can say uh, in terms of when the um, reward is going to come and uh, so on and so forth. And many of the experiments would go on and prove that such kind of expectation do have uh, do happen and there is also a counter uh, argument to say that it is I mean uh, the, the debate is not about whether there is an expectation or not, but it is about at what level do the animal understand that we are that it is expecting or is just a reflexive and I mean it is not going through its conscious um, cognitive system, but it just uh, goes through it is a reflexive um, uh, as a reflexive response. Either way what is um, uh, n n what we do not have to debate about is this notion that we actually uh, developed in the very first in the very beginning which is during this stimulus response outcome you are uh, the animal is developing this association good. So, now when you are actually taking away this outcome it is in direct conflict with what it is known uh, what it has learned so far when it is a continuous reinforcement right. So, it knows for sure it should have been there it is not there. So, I should change my response well that signal goes down in magnitude in various amounts depending on which of the scheduling which of the partial um, reinforcement scheduling that you take. Clearly, in the partial reinforcement scheduling, you are taking away that liberty, right? Just because you do not get an outcome does not mean you will never get an outcome. So, the animal does not know or animal cannot change its response to 0, right? It is just that it is very um, unpredictable. How unpredictable you can make you can make it, I mean and still be contingent right that is that is the key here if you if it is not contingent you are not going to make an association you have to be contingent, but still there, there is this um, uh, notion of at some point I would get a reward right that is that is what is uh, keeps driving that keeps driving them. And in fact, we use that for a good um, um, effect by reinforcing or keeping the stimulus response association. Um, longer I mean e even after you remove that um, coupling of the response to the outcome you can actually make them have that stimulus response um, behavior for a longer period of time. 
just by changing the nature of presentation of the outcomes at which instance you are presenting them. Good. So, we have learned couple of quite a few things about the reinforcement um, uh, process or the operant conditioning process. Now, let us revisit our original idea of um, what is it the animal is actually learning. Is it um, learning uh, and do all the animals learn in a same manner right. Revisit the idea of is it reflexive or cognitive and is it a, a complete um, phenomena or a universal phenomena that is common towards all the animals. Clearly the answer is no right, it is not common for all the animals. Different animals have dip, different propensity to learn this stimulus response outcome in different ways. So, number one we say that both these processes can happen that is cognitive as well as reflexive things can happen. And number two we say that uh, different individuals have different propensity and of course, um, the value of the outcome again changes as a function of time, function of um, context, con function of so many different things for an individual itself. Um, so, it is no it is no surprise across an individual um, this same phenomena can uh, induce learning in a different uh, manner. So, Flagel et al um, in uh, 2011 or I think 2009 or uh, 2011 um, decided to address this issue using um, this uh, stimulus response learning paradigm in rats. We will uh, get into that in detail in the next lecture. However, uh, let me give a little bit of a prelude of what exactly the behavior is so that we can connect these um, phenomena that we have learned to that experiment and then in the next lecture we can take it forward from where we are uh, left there. So, in short we are going to be using a Skinner box um, kind of a um, instrument where there is a light cue that being the stimulus that being one of the stimulus there are many other stimuli that are present there right. So, that, that being um, as, as soon as the light cue comes on the rat need to go and press a lever that is complete uh, that is on the di I mean that is on the diametrically opposite side of the box. When it presses the lever it is going to get the food that is again it is in the the food magazine is on the other side. People pick this kind of an arrangement I mean the light cue can be here or here it does not matter um, in one of those places for a particular reason. The reason here being the lever when the animal presses the lever the food gets released on the food magazine, but it stays there not for infinite amount of time, but for a very finite amount of time you can tighter the time such that it is just about sufficient for the animal to run and get it there. So, clearly it will be very very advantageous if the animal starting from here need not have to travel it from across this box. If it directly can go and get this food that will save its time and for sure ensure the availability of the food. So, it is that is the advantage however, the contingency here is unless and until it presses the lever the food is not going to be there. So, that is light cue you can either this or this you can, we can call it a stimulus that is the response and that is our outcome. 
all right so now what what are they going to do they are actually going to utilize this um, geometry to probe two kinds of behavior that are natural to these rats a behavior a we are going to call it as sign directed and behavior 2 I am going to call it as goal oriented responses. And then go on to probe what determines a given animal will be either responding in a sign directed manner or a goal oriented manner and can we bias them and if we have to bias them how do we bias them. With that I will end this lecture thank you and see you in the next one.